This lesson deals with charge, current, and Kirchhoff's current law. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 2 starting on page 1. Chapter 2 is going to deal with the fundamentals of electric circuits, and the first topic we're going to talk about is charge, current, and then Kirchhoff's current law. Now we're all familiar with energy, but it's actually not a measurable quantity. It's a derived concept. To measure energy in an electrical system, we're going to need to define a measurable quantity called charge. Now there's two kinds of charge, positive charge and negative charge. You may recall that like charges repel, while unlike charges attract one another. Let's define electric current. Electric current is the rate of charge flow passing through a predetermined area, typically a cross-sectional area of a piece of wire. It's defined as the change in charge per change in time. Now if you take the change small enough, that becomes a derivative. So I is equal to dQ dt, where I is current in amperes, charge is in coulombs, and time is in seconds. The electric current has a direction associated with its flow of charge, just like water in a pipe or a hose. An arrow is used to indicate the equivalent flow of positive charge. We'll next take a look at what's called Kirchhoff's current law, or just KCL for short. Before I do that, I need to define two more things. The first one is a node, and it's a juncture of two or more circuit elements. You can think of a lamp as a circuit element. Two prongs on the plug, and you plug that into a wall outlet. Suppose you plug another lamp into the outlet right below it, and those two prongs constitute two nodes. But the node is not just confined to the prong or the point of connection, but it includes all of the zero resistance wire associated with it. The other thing I need to define is what's called the conservation of charge postulate. And really, what is a postulate? If you had geometry, postulates are things that are assumed to be true, and that given a set of postulates, you can derive theorems and properties. In electric circuits and electronics, there are two postulates. The first one is the conservation of charge, and simply stated that charge is neither created nor destroyed. So if this is true, the following theorem follows, and many others actually. Let me define Kirchhoff's current law. The algebraic sum of the currents entering a node equals the algebraic sum of the currents leaving in the node. So why would this be true? The charge that enters a node must leave the node since there's no place to store it, and it can't be destroyed. Now this is true at every instant in time, and recall that current is charge per unit time. Total current that enters a node must equal the total current that leaves a node. Now in the course, I'm going to be using boxes like this to indicate a proof. There are many ideas in electric circuits that don't apply to electronic circuits. It turns out Kirchhoff's current law does, and I'm going to be able to describe when and where things will work and not work. So we need to look at why things are true, and most of these proofs are just using basic concepts. Let's do an example. Suppose I have a battery and three light bulbs hooked up in this configuration. This actually is the electrical symbol for an incandescent bulb. There's a different symbol for an LED, and we'll look at that a little bit later in the course. The dots here indicate the solder connection to make a good electrical connection, but actually this is not a node. All of this together is a node. Probably easier to show you a picture than to give you a word definition. And likewise here is a node. Now I want to arbitrarily select the direction of current. I'll later show you how you can do this in a problem. But I'm going to call this current I, I1, I2, and I3. And whatever enters has to leave, because again we can't destroy charge or create it. And then the current I1 here will also be over here, and likewise this one and this one do Kirchhoff's current law at node 1, the current entering the node is I, and the current leaving is I1, I2, and I3, so we add those together. If we do Kirchhoff's current law at node 2, we have I1, I2, and I3 entering, and I leaving. I need next to tell you about what's called the interpretation of signs. If you assign a direction of current, and it has a value, and for some reason you want to actually show it in the other direction, flowing this way. What that means is you have to change the sign of the quantity. Sometimes it's convenient to have currents all entering a node or all leaving a node. And we'll play some games with that and you'll see an example on the next page. So if you change the direction of a current in an element, you simply change the sign of the value of it. Now there's actually another way of doing Kirchhoff's current law. I should also mention that in German, Kirchhoff is pronounced Kirchhoff. And you might hear it pronounced either way. The anglicized version of it is Kirchhoff. Here's an alternative form of Kirchhoff's current law. If the currents entering a node are added and the currents leaving a node are subtracted, then the algebraic sum of all these currents is zero. 
Now, why would that be true? Well, if a designated direction of current is leaving the node, we could reverse this direction and thereby change its sign. Now, summing the currents results in all the currents entering the node and none leaving. So the summation with the minus signs would have to be equal to zero. And why would we do that? Well, there's some theorems that are actually easier to prove if one side of the equation is actually zero. In the course, I will normally not be using this alternative form of Kirchhoff's current law. I find it easier to use the first technique that we describe. We'll use that through most of the course. Let's do that example over again with this revised Kirchhoff's current law, just to show you how to use it. So here I've got a current entering the node, and the currents leaving I'm actually going to subtract. In other words, I'm changing their direction. So when I add that up, I get I plus a minus I1 plus a minus I2 plus a minus I3. So now these currents are all entering the node. Then we change the sign, and nothing is leaving the node, so it's equal to zero. Likewise, if you did it down here, I1, I2, and I3 are entering, and minus I is entering, and nothing is leaving, so it's equal to zero. I find this confusing, but it is convenient in some proofs to do this, and so we will when necessary. And this is the explanation of charge, current, and Kirchhoff's current law.